Hi, everyone. I want to welcome you to the second day of National Distance Learning Week with SUNY Online. Um, if we haven't met before, I'm Erin Maney. I'm the Manager of Communications and Community Engagement at SUNY Online, and I'll be your moderator for this session. Just have a couple housekeeping items. We are keeping mics muted as the session is being recorded, but of course, we'll have time for Q&A at the end, and you can type questions in the chat as we go along. Um, we'd actually love for you to take a moment now to introduce yourself so we know where you're tuning in from. That's always nice to see. And I am thrilled to introduce our speaker today, Jennifer Schloming. You're uh, going to have a lot of fun with Jen. She's a great presenter. Um, Jennifer is an associate professor at the Fashion Institute of Technology and the assistant chairperson of the Science and Mathematics Department. She's been a faculty member at FIT since 2006 and teaches both online and in-person mathematics courses. Um, Jennifer completed the Teaching with Technology Certificate program at FIT and is a SUNY Online Teaching Ambassador. So we're really glad to see her contributions today. Her research interests include technology and teaching and learning, rapid content generation for mathematics, Mathematical fiction, which I think is fascinating, along with mathematical poetry. I, that's amazing. Uh, and of course, online learning. So thank you, Jen, for um, sharing your expertise today. I'm going to turn this over to you. Thank you. I'm so excited to show my little fun things that I use in my classes. So let me start sharing my screen. Uh, tab. Jen, you're, you're muted, but I can see your slides now, so that looks great. Oh, weird, okay. I figured it out, sorry. Perfect, awesome, <laughs> nope, go for it. I kept pressing it. Um, okay, hi, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so I'm very excited to talk about quick ways to enhance enjoyment. You know, I have a lot of fun doing these uh, little things that you'll see. I think the students will have fun also. And I say quick ways, but sometimes you might find one of these things, let's say like an anim animation, and it might not be quick anymore because you'll just want to <laughs> play around with it longer. Um, I'm going to give you know, a brief overview of a few things, and then please ask me questions throughout. You could interrupt me, but at the end, um, yeah, and so this is really not, I'm not going into detail about all of them. I'm just giving you a like, quick look about certain things. Uh, so you can see my Bitmoji there, but I am going to use one of the tools called Loom you can see that I pressed on the browser and now you'll be able to see my face really prominently while I give this presentation. So I'm going to put myself up there nice and big and I can also see everyone like that. So I'm going to focus on Bitmojis, animations, Loom, Edpuzzle, and Spark. So a lot of, a lot of things here. Um, these are a few of my favorite things. And they really help emphasize my presence and hopefully create a meaningful connection to students who don't get the face-to-face -face interaction. Um, I think anyone who just comes into my office, they could look around, they see bits of my personality everywhere in, in my office. I try to do the same thing for my classes, even though they're online. I really think sometimes my online students get to know me even better than my in-person students. So Loom is my absolute favorite tool, and I'm using it right now, as you can see in the little circle. I pretty much use it for everything. I use it outside of courses, like now giving presentations, running meetings, just so, uh, you know, if I'm presenting something and I'm not the focus, people might 
I don't know, do, do other things, but they know I'm interacting. If they see my face, I'm looking at everybody here. Uh, it's also wonderful, as you'll see uh, how I use it in my courses, to show how your online courses work or to make explaining videos about topics. Really, Loom, you can use it for anything. And if you have the Chrome extension, which I showed uh, in the beginning and I'll show again, it takes about five, I don't know how long it took me to log in and, and start, um, less than a minute for sure. So for Loom, you go to whatever site you want to make a video about or show explain. And then you go to find the Loom icon, which has changed once, but now it is the blue circle-y one. And you'll see when I did this, I had two notifications, which I'll get into. Um, and that's all you have to do to, to start your video. Once you create any video, um, so for meetings, I don't save the videos. I just use it so you can see my face. But if I'm making a video uh, for my online students in any way, I will, of course, save the video. It generates transcripts. And one thing I think is super cool that they started is you can embed so quickly. If you look closely, you'll see my little circle over here. It's a GIF or GIF, as, as some might say. Um, and I really think having these GIFs of the videos really grab student attention. They show like, wow, my instructor is you know, taking that extra step and they feel the presence. I'm literally in the, <laughs> in the class explaining. Um, you can also have the links in any other way, but I will show you both. Uh, most of the time you will see GIFs in my, in my classes. Uh, if you're sending a Loom video directly to a student, you can you know, not put it in your LMS. You could send it straight to the student. And what you saw before with that little two icon is you'll be notified when someone watches the loom. So that is fantastic. If you make a video for a specific student, but then you know you, they didn't watch it. I mean, that's, we don't want that to happen, but it's wonderful that you can see when uh, students watch. And if you have the Chrome extension, you'll have uh, this little notification here. So at one point I had eight notifications and you'll also get a video. So like I said, you can share Looms very easily in different ways. In this uh, end of my mini lecture, I just shared with a regular link, but you know, it's up to you <laughs> and your style. <laughs> So um, as I said, I use Loom for pretty much everything. And I really love to make interactive videos with Loom. So Loom is usually my like, default that I use for videos. And then you can use Loom with other tools too. So I was gonna show you just quick examples. Can you see this tab too? Yeah, okay, great. Um, so this, I will show you this tool soon. I'm going to mute myself. Nope, Jen, I can um, just see the slide that says example one and two. Oh, okay, thanks for telling me. Yep. All right, so let me, I think I need to share my whole browser, so. Or the, right, I'm or the whole desktop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one second, huh. sorry. Let's go to share screen, a whole window, and let's make sure that you guys can see everything. Can you see, can you see, um, oh, wonderful. Okay, thank you for telling me. So in this interactive video that's playing, and now my loom disappeared, loom on loom. I'll get back to that. So 
in this uh, interactive video that's playing in the background, I didn't pause it. It pauses automatically when you tell it to, and then students can interact with the questions. It doesn't even have to be questions. It's just um, incidences <laughs> in the video. And I'll talk about this more when we get to Edpuzzle. I'm just showing that I love to use Loom with other things too. So I'm gonna skip this because we're gonna come back to it later. But here I was explaining something about the course using Loom, uh, which I do all the time. And the other example, I'll just show you quickly of another way that I used Loom recently. Well, I guess this one, yeah, this one's pretty recently from last semester. I was teaching a new course and I wanted to show the students where to find things. So here it's, I'm using Loom to go on to um, our Blackboard course site and showing students where things are. So they can see my face and it'll automatically stop the video at certain points. It provides links, it uh, will have questions and so on. So Loom, just trying to show Loom for everything. <laughs> Loom, Loom for uh, course information, for tips, for anything. I'm not gonna show you so many. I think you get the idea. Um, let's see what this one was. Oh, okay. So for Loom, you also don't have to use your face. I do think that, you know, having either your face or a Bitmoji or a static image is really um, how you can quickly connect with students in one way. So for me, I usually will, you know, do this and show my face. But one of the options is to not have the camera on, to just do the screen. And I have a default picture. I think that's also fine. Um, because when you're making the videos and the students are hearing your voice, you know, that's better than, than nothing. So um, I really find different ways to make these Loom videos. And the one that I clicked on before was just me playing a, a statistics game. You can see here, it's not my face, it's just my default Loom picture. And uh, I just made a video to explain this correlation topic through a game. I think the more you use Loom, the more you'll find fun ways to incorporate it into your class or your life, you know, outside of class too. Um, yes, so um, one day I was making a, I think showing somebody how to use Google Slides and instead of explaining it in an email, I just created a quick Loom video of it when faculty members ask questions about certain things, instead of doing uh, just an answer, I will also throw in a loom too. And you know, just keep it about a minute for, for that. Okay, so what you saw while I was using loom, one of the things was Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle is newish to me. It's free. Everything here I'm talking about is free. Um, and it's to me, it has the interaction with the pop-ups. I think that's really um, good for students. There's low stakes. I'm not grading anything with Edpuzzle. It just automatically stops videos and focuses on certain parts of the video. Um, I think a lot of us are maybe burnt out <laughs> with videos. And many years ago, it was quite exciting when teachers had videos in the classes. And now I feel like students um, are not as excited when there are videos. And it kind of helps to draw attention to certain parts of your videos. And that's why I try to have these interactive videos that will pause at certain parts and either ask a question about what um, the students have just viewed or reminders. Maybe just, maybe just me and some of my students are <laughs> tired of videos, but um, so I've been trying to use Edpuzzle and others more. It's very simple to use and I've been using it mostly with Loom. So here you'll see just a screen 
shot of the other video. And besides for questions, you can add in pretty much anything. You could add in voiceovers, bitmojis, images, math equations. So again, it doesn't have to be um, some sort of formal assessment or certain questions. It really helps to just draw attention to certain parts of your video. Okay. And for those that want later, you, you're welcome to click and play and see the video. Um, of course, I use my face a lot, but <laughs> I, I use some of these does Loom have closed captioning? It has a transcript that it generates after, which is fantastic. Thank you for the question. Keep asking questions whenever you want. Uh, I think uh, for those, for videos that you make, what's wonderful is that you can use them hopefully semester after semester. And it doesn't have to necessarily be with your online students only. So with this, uh, you can see here, I started using uh, Animaker, which I will talk about also, I mainly started using it for my in-person students because they see me all the time. And I thought, well, my online students can also enjoy this. But here I have an Ed puzzle, and I want you to see the events. So events is where the video will stop. They look like teardrops. So in this video, I had three events that pauses the video automatically for our students to interact with. When you're using um, Edpuzzle, you can add a voiceover, which I'll talk about. Uh, you could add questions. And in this screenshot, you can see really clearly that it's not just for questions. You can add a note. You can add with this microphone, your voice, images, links, equations, text, you have lots of options to add. But of course, questions are wonderful. And I really like how it can give feedback. So on the next one, do you know if all these tools are compatible with Brightspace? Well, Loom is compatible with, with anything. You could just put it in and bed it. Oh, uh, I don't see how it, it wouldn't be. Uh, you can put looms as links. You can put looms as GIFs. You can also uh, embed things. So like, I can show you at the end how I embed. Yeah, it's similar to embedding or linking a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. uh, all these tools, and I'll get to my favorite one soon, uh, it was a little tricky at first how to figure out how to embed certain things into Blackboard. But once you figure it out, I'm pretty sure it's similar with all the LMS. Um, great question, though. We'll all find out soon, I guess, <laughs> when we move to Brightspace. Uh, so here I had a question for the students about my course, um, Frequently Asked Questions, because sometimes I get students asking me questions that um, are in a blog that I have with frequently asked questions where they can just search. So I asked, do you, do you know about it? Are you, do you see it? I hope the answer is yes. But if not, you know, it'll show up red and it'll give feedback. Like you should really read over those course information documents because it says it in there. Um, for what you saw, my Ed puzzles, it can take uh, more than quick, uh, quickly to make because I try to use all different things. But Edpuzzle really can be a super quick way to make videos and to connect with students. So I, I really wanted to focus on that. You don't have to make your own Edpuzzle videos. Okay, so you can find Edpuzzle videos very quickly in different ways. So I teach math and I just Googled symmetry. These are beautiful Ed puzzle videos with symmetry. And what I do is I, I remix it. You can take any of the videos that you find and just put it as links or embed in your classes. But you know, to add that extra connection with students, 
it doesn't take long to just add a voiceover for these pre-made videos. They encourage it. They, they want it for Edpuzzle. I thought, wow, that's really interesting. They want you to take their content and make it your own with your own voice and share it. And remember, Edpuzzle also has these interactive questions. So they're easy to find videos. I, I generally use my own. I do loom things, but I have used their own. Uh, their, their videos that they've made. So I thought like, if you find a great video, but someone did it, great, you can just use it in your course. But to take it to that extra step to have connection with students, you can just do a voiceover. And I was just going to show you, um, not the whole thing, but just an example of what I mean. So it's loading. I'm going to well, I'll start it over here. So you're going to hear my voice, but I didn't make this beautiful <laughs> video. I'm just going to show you a little bit. And all these questions were already there for, for Edpuzzle. So I'm just going to play for a few seconds so you can get an idea. Okay, I'm muting myself, but you can see I, I took a video that they made and it's just my voice. So the students really, you know, get the quality of someone else's wonderful video, but they still get to, to hear me and know that I'm really present in this online class. And you can see here that uh, it'll stop and this video is just full of multiple questions that they made. So that was one example on how to remix. The other and last example for Edpuzzle that I wanted to show was using Loom, of course, because I keep using Loom. And I keep using Loom because of the closed captioning and because um, I really do like to have my, my, I don't like seeing myself, but I really think that it's good for students to keep seeing their, their teacher and feel a, pre a presence. So I took, I'm going to mute myself. Where is it? Okay, I, and for these videos, I really have fun making the videos. I'm going to explain things to students anyway. You can see usually I'm, you know, smiling, having fun doing these videos for students. It really isn't like, oh no, I have to make a video. It's like, oh great, I get to make another video. And I always end my announcements. If you have any questions, you want any more videos, please let me know. And students will ask for certain videos. It's great. Uh, and you can see here in this Loom video, it's me doing a Edpuzzle showing and there's this transcript here. Okay. All right, so that is uh, Edpuzzle and how I share. You can see the GIF or GIF um, of me, and I would just post it like this in my lectures at the bottom if it was part of like the bottom of a lecture, or you can send the link. And I really recommend Loom because of the transcript. And I showed you that one for um, using, uh, oh, Edpuzzle, right, right. So in the beginning, I showed you an Edpuzzle with this animation. So you have many choices with Edpuzzle, sorry. So you have their videos that you can remix or just use. You can use Loom and then Edpuzzle, but you can make any video at all and then use Edpuzzle. So you can take any video that you create and make it interactive. So I just wanted to point that out, that it doesn't have to be Loom. It doesn't even have to be you know, theirs. You can do anything and you just add content and you upload your video. And it's super simple to figure out. You just edit it and you have fun. <laughs> you add what you want. You can add the questions or other things. Edpuzzle I've only used so far for me as a teaching tool, 
but Edpuzzle can also be used as a student tool. And I'm not gonna talk about that, but I included it in the slides so that if anyone is interested, they can see later. Um, and Edpuzzle made a video very quick on ways to use student projects. So I think that's useful and I left it there, the video and also a link to an article from Edpuzzle on how to use uh, Edpuzzle for student work. Okay. So I'm trying to move quick to, to get through all, all my favorites. Um, Adobe Express, I'm gonna mention really quickly. Adobe Express is probably my favorite uh, Oh, Loom is my favorite tool, but Adobe Express is my favorite like web page <laughs> look that I use for my classes. Um, all my online courses are, they use Adobe Express web pages to give the courses their look. And what's wonderful is, you know, if you update uh, links or information semester to semester, you can work in Adobe Express and just click on update your link and you don't have to do anything. It just updates it in your learning management system. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, I use uh, Adobe Express pretty much all the time uh, for visual um, content for my students so that they know like I really, I'm trying to put effort into what I create for them. So just like a quick graphic I'll add for midterms using Adobe Express. Doesn't take long to make. I just made this, yeah, it, oh, great for infographics. They have so many templates. Uh, I made this uh, isomorphic graphs for my graph theory class. This took like five minutes tops. Yesterday I made tons of graphs uh, for my class in no time. And you know, the colors you use, the style, that all is a reflection of you and your personality for your students. So uh, I think it's really important to just, you know, be yourself and have your students see your personality and get to know you. Uh, let's see what this one was. Uh, just more videos, even the way my course uh, look is, so I hope in Brightspace they have the same choices, you know, with the colors that you can edit and the, you know, uh, the themes, just to add more about uh, myself. So I use Adobe Express for all my web, the look of my course site, quick, making quick graphics, even videos. I won't go over it. You can look later if you would like, um, but I did want to show the web pages because for the web pages, I will have, you know, Loom in them on top of using a, uh, these uh, Adobe Express. I will have Bitmojis, animations. So here, let me just show a quick Adobe Express page. Uh, that one is a, is a video, but hopefully I'm going to click. All my modules in every single online course has something similar. We're on top. The students can click and then everything for that unit is in this Adobe Express page. So this is a statistics class that I showed. So the, the images and the colors I thought would be work well with whatever um, the statistics topic is. For when I teach geometry and art, my backgrounds are very geometric for if I'm doing Fibonacci, I'll have Fibonacci things. For graph theory, it'll be different too. So every class I will have Adobe Express pages, but I will use them in different ways. Okay. Uh, so I use them also to make simple pages. So like midterm and final information, really basic you can do as well. So here it's loading, but this is a simple uh, Adobe Express page, just about the midterm information. I just think it looks really sleek. You could put in links to any of the things that we've shown so far, but the images you can quickly pick based on 
you know, what you're talking about. So midterm, I thought, okay, that looks like a good studying image for that. And again, since we're just doing little like uh, a mousse bouche <laughs> of each thing, I have a little handout if you want to uh, look at Adobe Express more. The last two, you've seen Bitmoji, one of my favorite things. Uh, if you don't know, a Bitmoji is an emoji, so a cartoon avatar that you create and you try to make it look like you. So <laughs> I tried there. And I have a Bitmoji extension for my Chrome browser, and I also have it for Gmail. So easy access to slip Bitmojis pretty much everywhere. And you can see these are my favorites that I use in my classes after uh, the students do well in assignments. I'll post like well done or excellent. Um, I will make a lot of posts, any questions like a checklist to sign up for certain things. I think they're really uh, just, they take about 30 seconds to do. Actually, can you see me click on my, my browser extension, a little bit emoji symbol? Yeah, I see a nodding. Okay, mm -hmm. so you just click on there and you can type in anything you want. So I could type in math and math symbols, but also the word will show up. And that's it, you just copy and paste or drag it and you're done. So really fast and simple. Uh, you could also click on the categories, like if you're celebrating or if you're really happy. The pop-up doesn't show, but the browser extension, yeah, the browser extension is absolutely amazing. Um, highly recommend. And the last one I have started using this semester is, you could tell because of the mask, <laughs> is uh, Animaker. So it's free and it's very similar to Bitmoji, except that you can do different things with your character. So I can make a course announcement, uh, which I've done using my character uh, doing, doing this basically. You've seen in the other videos, uh, that I showed, I also have used it using Edpuzzle or using, um, you know, other things too. So here I just wanted to show you. Very simple and straightforward to use. Uh, anyone who knows me uh, knows I like bubble tea. So I even added a little bubble tea here. So it's really like me. You can add music, you can add your voice. Uh, for this video, I really, there's no voice. It's just a simple video with text. Uh, very, very short. I didn't post it yet. I was just getting ready to post it for next semester. And I just, I, for me, it was fun to make, easy to make. It doesn't look like it was easy, but it was. And I think students will also just like smile or, <laughs> or be like, oh, wow, my teacher really has too much time on their hands. Um, no, but I really think it's, it's a great way to get information across where students will take a minute to look at what you have created. So, you know, putting in the due dates uh, for online classes, of course, that's like the major thing that I have to stress. So I thought, let me make this you know, one minute video to share with students. And it did not take long. And with Animaker, yeah, exactly. So they they make me look like a technology. I love technology, but I'm not like a super, you know, tech person, but I feel like I am just because I can use these really sleek looking tools. They're very easy to use and they're fun. So here I designed my character of my for Animaker. And uh, I used pre-made scenes and I just put myself in them and it's so fun. They're all different actions that you can do. So here, you know, I just did like a little cheerleading one. I'm here to, I'm here to help, um, but you can see anything that you really can think of, no matter what you're teaching, you can find and it'll be of you. So, um, thermometer, 
really I just every, every I, I couldn't find whenever I'm looking for something I can Google uh, not Google I could just use the search to uh, find it so if I want like you know jumping I'll have like a whole bunch of different choices so I think that's the one that I used before maybe or uh, computer and then you could have at your desk Oh, and you could have like, you know, they have really funny ones too. So um, I, I really like this program that I just found. And that's it. So that's, uh, I tried to cover briefly my favorite ones, but if you know of any ones that I should try, please let me know because I would love to. And I just wanted to make sure that there was time for questions. So thank you. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I always um, find these tools fascinating. I learn a new one every time I am in a session with you. So I did know a couple of the other ones, but what I love is that a lot of these work together. And so you can kind of, you know, layer these things and have such a dynamic experience for your students. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, the thing is, once you find one that you really love, like Loom, then I kind of, you know, I'm always finding ways to, to use Loom and then use it with other tools too, like you said, yeah. Does anyone have a question? You're welcome to um, undo your mic or type in the chat. So Spark, I know we have a blog post about Spark, which I can find the link to if you want to talk about that. So Spark, I am obsessed, but they changed the name to Adobe Express. So um, I did talk briefly about Adobe Express. That's the same exact thing as Spark. And depending on what school you, which, you know, SUNY school you're in, uh, my Blackboard for FIT, it still says Spark. <laughs> so, uh, but it's the same thing. And you're all very welcome. I say thank you. So there's a link to the um, uh, blog post that you did for us on Express Pages and, you know, Spark, but yeah. Yeah, I know Esther, right? Like I get motivated to go and play with all these tools now whenever I see this kind of a demo, it's great. Oh, that's a great question. So the slides and the recordings will all be posted on our site, which I'm going to put that link in here for you right now, this bit.ly, um, we link slides and recordings uh, in there with the session descriptions. So you can revisit that at any time this week to get all of the uh, presentations shown. Should I post the, uh, this presentation also in the chat now or, or send oh, it absolutely. to you later? Absolutely. Okay. So it looks big, but you can click on that okay. now if you want. <laughs> No problem. And if there are any tools that you saw that you um, think I should concentrate more or maybe like make a blog post in the future or like a separate talk for, um, also please let me know. Right, I think, you know, we've done the Bitmojis, we've done Express and Loom, um, but certainly like Edpuzzle is a new one for me. That's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so we could look at that. And then I'm also curious with the participants that are joining us, is there a cool tool that you like to use that you could pop in the chat for us to go explore later? That would be nice to know. For Loom, uh, they can be. It's up to you who, let me go to Loom right now. And I'll also delete. So right here, uh, it recorded, you know, most of the talk and you can review transcript it, here where it says share. Oh, sorry. Also, um, for video settings, you have all different choices of what to do. And my default is I just don't want to deal with comments. So um, I let people do emoji reactions uh, and I you can let people download if you want or I don't really show analytics to viewers, but I make sure that it's the transcript is there. And then you have different options to share. So you can share with certain people. You can share with 
in these ways. And my favorite is the embed code where I just, I copy the gift and I paste it somewhere. And here you can see how you want to share. So if you want anyone, or if you want to add certain people and so on. Yeah, I think that's good to know, um, you know, the privacy settings, especially. Great. Are there other questions for Jennifer? Wonderful. So I would also encourage you, um, I put the link uh, just a couple statements above to a um, to a blog post on uh, Express Pages. But if you are on that site in the search bar, if you actually type in Jennifer's name, you can get any of the blog posts that she has done for us. And there, there are quite a few on these different tools where she really focuses in on each one. So that's another place to learn more. All right. So I am going to um, pull up our slide here to just give us some closing thoughts. So again, as always, Jennifer, I just am thankful for your uh, willingness to share with us uh, in so many different ways. And we always learn something fun and new. I thank all of our participants for your attendance and attention. The slides of all the sessions, again, will be at that bit.ly link that I put up at the top and I'll, um, I'll pop it in here again. And I also want to encourage you, um, if you don't know, National Distance Learning Week is sponsored by USDLA, and that organization um, promotes our SUNY sessions as well. And so I encourage you to go to their site and see what else is going on this week. They have events from, uh, you know, just around the country that are available to you at all different times of the day this week. And so that might be something fun that you'd like to see. It is also their 15th anniversary. And so they have like a special keynote and they have um, a couple other um, exciting things that you might want to participate in. So we encourage you to explore those additional offerings. I am going to stop the recording. If you are planning to join us for the next session, this Zoom room is going to stay open. So you can stay right here. We have sessions uh, at this one at 10. We have one at 11, 12, and one. So you can leave the room open all day. We're just going to start and stop the recordings for each one.